Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here. Welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at another standard template library algorithm. This time it's going to be the generate and generate n algorithms. Now they help us solve a problem that from our last video you might have noticed. So let's do a brief recap and then we'll go ahead and dive into CPP reference to look at generate. But if you recall from the last video, we had this idea that I could work with something like a forward list and that I could just fill it or populate it with, say, if I have 10 values here and all of them will be filled with 9999. Or I can even have a little bit of control here and pick an iterator here and for just, say, five of the values, fill in zeros. But what happens if I want to fill in the value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., counting up? So this fills our whole data structure with the same value, which is great for initialization, but what if I actually want to populate this with some data? Like maybe I've written a function to generate a bunch of random numbers, for instance, for my video game, for instance. Or maybe just I want to generate a series of numbers and solve some numerical equation, like some sort of Taylor series or, again, numeric computation. So that's where we want to be able to use something like a generate function. Now, again, this is useful because otherwise, well, you know, these fill algorithms don't really help us. So let's get rid of these here. I'm going to go ahead and switch this to a vector here. So let's work with a vector events. And again, if I didn't know any better, I would have to fall back to my loop here, which again could be error prone. I mean, let's just go ahead and try out this code, which I had left here. Uh, and we're going to see that, well, it compiles, it runs. Uh, what did it do here? Well, it didn't do anything because there's nothing here because again maybe I was trying to be clever maybe I forgot that you know the reserve you know there's actually nothing in here uh, so I get rid of that and then I need to think about if I was optimizing uh, and you know this whole sort of headache of uh, putting in values here but eventually I figure it out and I put an I here and this should give us a counting uh, sequence here which finally populates our vector but again we're trying to avoid loops so we don't have to think about um, or, or rather leave ourselves open to various errors that could occur. I'll just have a function that I call that generates or populates values. In fact, some of you might actually be looking ahead. There is a handy function for this particular thing called IOTA. We're going to get to that in a later video uh, because that's part of the numeric library. But for now, what we have is generate. So now that I've got your attention, let's go ahead and go into our algorithms library. Again, we're going to be looking at the modifying sequence operations. We've looked at many of the non-modifying ones and we'll go down to generate here. Now, just looking at this, like all of our algorithms, this again is a templated algorithm and it needs to take in some uh, data structure that can take in a forward iterator. So again, that's most of our containers that's going to operate on because basically we need to be able to generate a number uh, where there's been memory allocated and then move forward uh, as many times as we have allocated. OK, uh, so we'll keep track of that uh, and maybe I'll run this a few times, uh, making some uh, the first time through I'm going to run it. Uh, and I think we'll see a mistake here uh, if I do this properly. But uh, that's the idea here. But the important part of this generate function, again, with our iterators here, the pair here, the first and the last, is this generator function G here. And that is the function object that will be called. So it could be an actual function call. We could put in a lambda, which we know is a functor, or again, we could implement a actual functor, which is sort of the old, you know, 98 uh, C++ 98 style uh, function that just returns us uh, a uh, value here. Okay, so that's effectively what it's saying here that we need to be able to return some sort of assignable value here that we could dereference. Okay. Uh, and again, the complexity is related to how many uh, linear, I guess, um, because we're going from the last, the first element, uh, unless we're, again, like traversing some sort of graph or, you know, some in more interesting data structure here. Uh, but let's go ahead and look at this. And again, basically all we're doing is looping through uh, from the start to the end here, uh, moving forward on our iterator and then assigning the value here as we move through our data structure, again, represent by first here to whatever our function generates. Okay, there's a little example here. We'll leave it up here because I think it'll be useful. Uh, but let's go ahead and refactor this code. I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. And let's go ahead and give ourselves a generator function here. Now, the simplest one, which I'm going to mirror from here, is just to uh, take advantage of a static variable that can store state for us. Uh, I here, let's initialize it to zero. Static variables should be initialized to zero. They have to be initialized to something, but again, I like to be explicit. And then we'll return, you know, I++ here. 
Or actually, if we want this to truly start out at zero, I++ might be better. That'll mirror this uh, behavior. Okay, so let's actually use our generate function here. I'm going to use begin uh, and end here. And then we'll call our uh, function here. Okay, and every time I call this function, it will return some uh, value here. And that'll be assigned inside of our vector. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a compile here. And when I run this, you should be looking suspect. Uh, does it actually generate anything? The answer is no. Okay. Uh, the reason is, right, we don't have any storage for our uh, ints here. So same sort of problem we wrestled with a little bit last time, right, where if I do uh, reserve, I'm going to type this out carefully, right, that's going to reserve memory, again, for our vector, uh, sort of as a placeholder, but again, we actually can't use it. So again, uh, we need to uh, explicitly say how big our uh, collection is. Now, if I do this, uh, we will see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. Again, you can get rid of the reserve if you want here. Uh, I believe this actually does um, allocate anyways. Uh, so it's, that call might be redundant. But um, uh, here is the idea uh, that we have this generator function here. Now, some of you might not exactly like this pattern here of having to generate functions which store uh, state, uh, right? You might rather encapsulate that into some sort of uh, instance of an object, like a functor or something. Um, and I mean, we had that same idea if you've watched our functors video, uh, where we could actually pass in a lambda here. So I'll go ahead and just highlight this lambda function here. So let's go ahead and sort of set that up here uh, because I like this uh, pattern. Um, so instead, let's get rid of uh, our function. Actually, I'll, I'll leave it in just if you want to leave it as an option. Let's just comment this out and do another uh, example here. Uh, oops. All right. Uh, and let's actually just make a lambda function here. Okay. Uh, now, how I'm going to set this up here, n equals zero. Uh, this is going to be sort of our counter. Uh, our value here, just like we see on the CPP reference here. Uh, I'm going to leave off mutable for a second, and let's remind ourselves what that means. And I'll return n plus plus here, okay? Uh, and that'll do the trick here, right? This uh, this compiles uh, or almost compiles. And let's go ahead and read the error here. It says increment of read only variable n, right? So my capture here, n equals zero. Uh, and again, that type is inferred. Uh, if I want to make this writable, uh, I add in the mutable keyword, okay? So that I can actually modify this uh, state here. Uh, and I've got that on a help page here, if you want to see here on Lambda expressions. Uh, I believe we looked at this at some point here, but if I look for mutable, which is one of the specifiers, so again, let's look at our sequence here. I've got the capture parameters, uh, and then the, uh, let's see, uh, specifiers here. Let's see. Uh, I guess under the, the specs here. Um, mutable allows the body to modify the objects captured by copy. Let's call their non-const member functions. Okay. Uh, so that's kind of nice here. That's again what that's doing here. Uh, so now I should be able to compile this, run it, and effectively it does the same thing here. Okay. Uh, so that's a nice pattern here. Now, uh, what's also nice about this, I mean, you could kind of use this as a basic pattern for your generators here. And then now you could actually come back and write this uh, function here. Again, I don't necessarily like this function with the static here. I'm going to just call this g. It'll take in an integer i. And then maybe now I'll do something like return i times 2. And again, I have a uh, counting variable here, n++. But let's just actually just feed that into... Uh, this function g here, okay? Uh, so I'm just passing in uh, this function here. Um, and, and g returns an integer here, okay? So that's the idea. So now if I compile this and run it, right, I get this series 0 to, you know, doubling the numbers that are passed in here. So this is a pattern that you could use. And again, you could decide if you want to start this from 1 or 0 or whatever. Uh, but I'd argue this is pretty nice here. This is pretty nice. This is pretty clean here. Uh, as opposed to, uh, you know, this allows us to get rid of our loop effectively. Now, again, think about what domain you're using if you actually want to use this generate here. I like it. I mean, you could actually use this to, for instance, like I could wrap this right here in a function and then return 
the vector or the array or whatever data type you want. And then you could, you know, effectively debug that or walk through that code if you want here. Uh, this also becomes pretty easy to unit test. I could probably compare this against uh, a vector here. So, I mean, not that you couldn't do that with a loop, um, but, you know, this probably makes it easier to have a bunch of different collections and just run it through this generate function rather than a uh, for loop that's templated or whatever, right? The work is already done here. I think it's more testable, more maintainable code um, for you here. So I think that's quite uh, nice here. So let's look at another function here. Uh, related, just like with uh, fill and fill n that we looked at, there is generate n. So it's going to follow roughly the same pattern here. Uh, it's going to take in a iterator to the first thing. Uh, we're going to count how many elements to generate. Uh, there's policies, so we can uh, change how the policy works. Again, maybe we'll look at those later if there's questions. Uh, but then we have the uh, generator function here. Uh, so as far as the overload is that we're going to look at uh, effectively this one here. Uh, or actually, since we're in C++20, there's a const expert version of this, so we can maybe do some things at compile time here. Uh, but let's go ahead and just modify uh, this function here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do here is let's just have the beginning. Uh, I'll have the uh, count. We'll do the first five elements. And then this, uh, the last five elements, let's just do n++ here. Okay. And again, this is going to be generate underscore n. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile this here. You can think about what the output's going to be. We're doubling our first, uh, or all of our numbers here. And then somewhere here, I'm going to, uh, you know, use... Uh, actually, let, let's make this a little bit more interesting here. Uh, let's make our end here. I mean, effectively, I could just pass in two iterators here. I could do begin in, so then like begin plus five or something. Um, so in a way, with generate n, you can kind of... I mean, generates the most uh, generic version of this, uh, but it's nice having the generate n version if you know the actual count or how many numbers or steps ahead to generate. Um, right, again, maybe you're programming a game, this is rolling dice, right, five times, and you're randomly generating five numbers or something, right? That could be a good use case for this generate uh, n, for instance. Um, let's let's actually just run this. Uh, this is fine here. It's going to change the first five numbers so that they're just incremented by one. And then the last uh, five numbers of our 10 are going to be doubling here. Okay, so again, compile, run, and you can see this behavior here. So uh, we've modified the same uh, data structure because these are modifying uh, algorithms. Uh, but you can see how we use generate n and generate here. All right, uh, so hopefully that makes sense. These, are, these can be very powerful functions. Again, you're just passing in uh, or I like using this pattern where you just have a counter and then pass to some uh, non-stateful function. So something that's just going to take an input and an output. Um, and there you go, right? You can generate uh, random patterns or or whatever you need. So again, you could parameterize this function too if you needed to look at the previous value or something. Uh, again, you have different uh, options depending on your use case. All right, folks, so with that said, as we're cruising along here, you can track your progress on my uh, website here, courses.mshot.io, uh, free to sign up here if you'd like. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, let me know your thoughts on this generate function. Uh, if you've been using it, if you have any cool use cases uh, in particular that you think are interesting, uh, I tend to use this stuff for you know pre-populating since we can do this with const expert uh, data structures with random numbers, um, and sometimes that works well. Uh, as well as the sort of dice rolling uh, example in like a game, for instance. All right. Anyways, folks, thanks for your time and attention. Hope you're enjoying this series. Look forward to your comments and look forward to seeing you in the next video.